So I'm at the orchard of a couple of friends of ours, Julia and Steve, this morning. And Julia texted me last night to say that she found something quite exciting in the woods alongside the orchard. So let's go inside the woods and have a look. Now, you can probably see already what it is. So there's another one over there, and there's another one there, and two here. And this is the giant puffball, Langermania gigantea. One of the most unmistakable wild mushrooms, or wild fungi. Don't suppose we can really call it a mushroom because it's not really mushroom shape. But, so there it is. And so the specimen we're looking at here is probably pretty much at the limit of size for edibility. It's about the span of my hand, so maybe seven inches in diameter. Just smaller than a football, really. And they do get a lot bigger than this. Now they get so big that apparently they've been mistaken for sheep because they usually grow in open grassy areas. Um, I don't know who mistook them for sheep. That's not important. It's a story. But yeah, that's about the biggest you can get and still have them edible. Really, they're better picked a bit smaller than that. But we're fortunate because there are four specimens, at least locally here, probably more if we looked around. After they get bigger than this, they start to turn into spores inside. And of course, that's how the fungus reproduces. So we're going to pick one of these today and we're going to make breaded giant puffball sandwiches. Also interesting to note that there is a badger set in here. So there is an active family of badgers living in amongst these woods here, which is good to see. So let's have a look and see which one of these looks the best for harvesting. They're always a little bit nibbled on the outside like this. That's kind of unavoidable. So we're going to be cutting those nibbled bits off and using the cleaner flesh inside the fungus. So that one feels nice and firm. But I think we might have one of these smaller ones here because there is such a lot of flesh inside these things. A bit of weird dirt embedded in it. So I think this might be the one we have. Hmm, doesn't feel quite as firm as that one. So yeah, I think we'll probably have this one here. And let's go and prepare that for the table. So I think we'll use some of these logs here to make a little kind of impromptu kitchen. And let's cook some lunch for me and Julia out of this wonderful puffball. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do is trim off all of this dirty outside bit here. And it's really curious when you cut this mushroom. It makes a kind of squeaking sound. It's very much like cutting polystyrene foam or something. But yeah, we're just going to cut away all this nibbled and dirty exterior very carefully just shave it off like this you don't in, in better specimens than this you probably don't need to do this but typically these things are so big that it's kind of okay to lose a bit of it this way I've eaten it a few times it's not a strongly flavored mushroom and it's got a very spongy soft texture as well so it, need, it will need a bit of help in the cooking. But I've brought materials today with me specifically to assist with that. And it really is just soft mushroom flesh that happens to be solid white mushroom. How about that? It feels like that art foam that you get. And if we were to just fry that as it is, it will absorb a lot of fat, which I guess if that fat is butter, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. But we're going to try today to bread it and prepare it a little bit like a piece of fried fish. So let's cut one more slice.
Okay, right. So, now I'm not going to wash it because you can imagine what would happen. This is like foam rubber. If I was to try to wash this, it would just soak up so much water, it would be completely worthless. So, let's crack on and make a nice batter for this. So, just brought a little bit of flour there with me. And to that we will add one egg. And I want to make quite a thick batter because really this is to seal that mushroom and to try to create a coating that will stop the fat from absorbing into the mushroom. Right, we can't just have an unseasoned batter though, so I brought my little spice kit with me. And we will have in this batter a pinch of salt, some mixed dried herbs, a little bit of smoked paprika, and of course, black pepper. Let's see how that looks when it's mixed together. Now the thing is with batter is batter does kind of mitigate flavours a little bit, so I might add some more seasoning to this batter just to make sure that we haven't really underdone the seasoning. I think we'll have a bit more of those herbs and that was only the tiniest pinch of salt, so we'll put another pinch of salt in there. Good, that's the batter. Just put that on to keep the flies out. Okay, now, I said we're going to bread these mushrooms. In fact what we're going to do is use cheesy tortilla crisps. So we'll put some of those in a bag and then just going to crush those to fine crumbs. Of course this is a bit of extra seasoning as well which is good. So I'll crush those up to really fine crumbs. You don't want any big pieces of that in there. That looks pretty good. So back with these mushroom fillets, let's just chop them up. We've got a tiny bug there, let's just rescue that. Now, we're cooking in the outdoors. It is inevitable that some bits of bugs and dirt will get into our food. If that worries you, don't do it. It doesn't worry me. So I'm going to cut these into reasonable sized pieces. I'm actually going to lose some of that middle there because as you can see that's a little bit woolly there. So we'll just cut a piece off the outside there and have that. Okay that's plenty. So mushroom into the batter. thought that might happen. It's, it's kind of breaking up, but that's not a problem. And then into the bag, we will shake it around. And that's what it looks like when it comes out, which is pretty good.
So there we go. Right, quick hand wash and then we'll crack on with cooking. Right, now it is a little bit breezy today, so I've just bodged up a very quick windbreak out of logs. We'll get the stove going. That should be enough. Just to stop it from blowing out. I've got a bit of vegetable oil. And we are going to use butter, but I'm not going to start with butter. I'm going to start with vegetable oil because this will not burn as easily as butter. And we'll just wait for that to come up to temperature. Excuse the uh, noise of planes in the sky, not much I can do about that. Okay, we can see that oil starting to go very thin now, which means it's nearly at temperature. I'm going to test that with a, yeah, we've got a little bit of a sizzle there, that's good. So, in we go with our pieces of breaded puffball. So we might have to do a little bit of tessellation here. We might be alright, I think we're just about going to, going to squeeze them in. If we turn that one round. I'm expecting that these will shrink a little as they cook. So, if we're cunning here, yeah, just about. And we are going to try and cook these quite gently because what I don't want to do is just burn the breading before the mushrooms inside are cooked. Here it's starting to sizzle, and actually the smell is quite wonderful. Most of that aroma is not the mushrooms themselves, it's the breading and the seasoning. And that's going to be the case with this, actually. This is not a strongly flavoured mushroom, so we have to help it along with the coatings and the seasonings. Okay, so these are all but done now. And they have shrunk a tiny bit. But not actually as much as I expected they might. But those are looking nice. And the way we can tell they're done is just resting a clean finger against the back of one of the ones I haven't turned. And I can feel the heat coming through, which means the heat's made, it, made its way all through the mushroom. So now we're just going to finish with a few pieces of butter. give that a shake around so they all get a fair share. Now obviously what I've made today is not vegan, it is kind of vegetarian, but that wasn't what we were aiming for really today anyway. Alright, so we're just going to continue frying that until that butter is absorbed and then we're ready to serve. Okay, those are now completely done, so I'm going to turn the stove off, whoops, off, and I'm just going to taste one as it is at the moment. So there we go, look at that. And the texture inside, now let's not pretend this is going to be like chicken or anything. It's more like, I suppose if we had to compare it to something, it's going to be like tofu. Mm. Oh, but there's a really nice mushroom flavour there. So the, so the eating experience is like silky, mushroomy, savoury little pieces of something. But yes, it's not like chicken, it's like, yeah, it's like mushroom flavoured tofu. So let's get preparing this meal. I apologise for the sound of dogs barking in the background, I can do nothing about that. Let's serve these up. Just a couple of little lettuce leaves. And then on that, I think we're going to have a little bit of homemade tartar sauce.
basically just mayonnaise, a bit of mustard, capers and gherkins chopped up. Okay, I think I've probably done this completely upside down. I should have done this the other way around. And then a nice slice of homegrown tomato in each one. Well, not bad, I would say. Okay, well in a minute we're going to find Julia and give her some lunch, but I'm going to taste one of these myself first. So, here goes. So yeah, you might think that the mushroom flavour would get completely lost in there. We did put a lot of seasoning in there. And there is the cheesy tortilla chips as well, and all the other stuff. But actually, there's... Yeah, this mushroom flavour is quite deep when it's cooked. That is a tasty sandwich. And you can see the mushroom's actually gone quite silky and soft inside of there. But it's really nice. Actually, it really combines well with the crispy crust and all those other ingredients in there. So that was my chicken fried giant puffball sandwich. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I certainly enjoyed eating it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.